Welcome to Girl Talk. So glad you can join us today. We're filming today at William Thomas Jewelers. This is on the corner of University Avenue and Farley. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? Yeah, this is your neighborhood. And yours too, I hear. Oh, mine too, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, well, back in the day. Back in the day for me too. Yeah. It's a lovely place. A lot of changes, but a lot of consistency here in this neighborhood, which is always nice to come back and see the places that you, you know, went to as a kid. We were talking about bagels forever. We both got lunch there, you know? <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> but we won't be talking bagels. We'll be talking diamonds today with the owner, Bill. Um, Although there I are like bagels talking, here. Oh, yeah. oh, I like talking about both. <laughs> Can we talk about diamonds while we eat a bagel? Is yeah. that acceptable? I think that's quite acceptable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was looking up diamonds and fun little known facts about them. And one that was interesting to me, maybe not so fun, but interesting is... I read that most of the diamonds that are mined are not actually used as jewelry. Oh, I didn't oh, They're that. used in for industrial purposes like drill bits and abrasives and things really? like that. Really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Janet, you are always expanding our knowledge. Did I, I ruin it. your bagel for no, you? No, oh. now I'm thirsty for knowledge <laughs> instead of hungry for bagels. I've always been fascinated too on the lab-grown diamonds. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're going to talk about those. Maybe we can ask Bill about those. But I also read that some German scientist were able to make a a diamond out of peanut butter. What? what? Excuse me? Well, diamonds are made out of carbon, okay. and um, most things, life forms and foods, are filled with carbon. Mm -hmm. And so they made a diamond out of peanut butter with using the lab-grown methods. Mm. Can you eat it? You can. <laughs> to me, it's we like both went there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was kind of a yellowish that color. That did not enter my brain, but I love that, that it entered yours. That thought. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I always thought chocolate and peanut butter was the, the perfect marriage. But, yeah. you know, peanut butter and dime is not so bad either. It's not sounding that's better and better. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what else do you have there, Janet? I know there's more facts on that page. Oh, I'm going to save those fun facts for okay. later. But we are talking fun as well. Well, I, before we move on, I wanted to see how well you know what my favorite diamond is. Ooh. I know My diamond been preferences. Been together. Mm. <laughs> is it like a certain cut? Is that what you mean? Or I know, I know, I know. I'm not giving it away. Like, carrots? Is the, okay. Well, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> Lots Do of I them. give it away? Yeah, go, go, go for A it. yellow diamond, right? Yes. So I love oh, yellow well, diamonds. Oh, the peanut and butter diamond. There. Like and what do you like it in? Is it, is it gold or... What's well, your particular preference? I, I, just, I like the yellow diamond. I wouldn't, I'd be happy with a platinum setting if anyone's watching and interested. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what it is. But I, I just love the look of the yellow diamonds. I think they're so beautiful and unique. They so. are. Absolutely. Mm. I don't own one, but I love it. Anyways, you can move on yeah. now. I yeah. just want to share that. Christmas is just around the corner, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Throw that out there. But we're, we're also <laughs> having fun talking about Frills Finery Photo Booth Company. That's a mouthful of. Uh, mm -hmm. Of fun right there. I love photo booths I do at too. events. I think that's a great addition. You can get so corny and make it unique and yeah. talk the owner of a photo booth. Well, what's neat about new photo booths, I'm sorry to interrupt, I just yeah. it just occurred to me um, that there's a way now with technology that you can have immediate gratification and send your cute little photo off to people via text, like right away when it happens. So I think that's something that she does. I want to hear more about how that yeah. works. I bet people really like that. So yeah. Way to keep up on your social media then. Yep, mm -hmm. you know, you might as well do it if you're having fun. You'll yeah, show everybody exactly. how much fun you're having at that moment, right? Yeah, that'll be <laughs> Capture a Capture the moment. Well, I also like that it, I like the idea for a corporate party because I think those tend to be a little stiffer and sometimes yep. it's harder to, you know, loosen just up and loosen up. Yeah, that's a good way to kind of loosen up mm -hmm. and wear a mustache with your coworkers. Oh, I did bring one of my favorite photo booth um, props, the mustache. Yes. So I have I to say, <laughs> I must ask you a question, but I'll shave it for later. <laughs> oh, oh my. That was so bad. I, I had to do it. That was so bad. I, it was good. Yeah. I had to do yeah. it. Yeah. So it Jocelyn, you know you're jealous. You I, like I kind of am. <laughs> but um, we're also going to be <laughs> talking you, a little bit about uh, a way to get involved with a wonderful organization called Wisconsin Women Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And a, a great way, what did I say earlier? Now I forgot, to have fun, food, and philanthropy. Oh, that's good. So good. we're excited to chat with them after the break. A really exciting event coming mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I don't know if there will be a photo booth there, but there is going to be free massages. Reflexology. I am a pushover for a foot rub. All right. <laughs> Yellow so. diamonds and foot rubs. <laughs> You're making your list. For your I am. I am. Excited to hear Secret that. Secret Santa. I hope I get Emily. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we have all that and more coming right after the break. And welcome back to Girl Talk. We're filming today at William Thomas Jewelers off of University Avenue, where later on we'll talk with the owner, Bill, about a girl's BFF, 
also known as diamonds. <laughs> Can't wait for that. Yes, looking forward to it. <laughs> right now, though, we're meeting with Sonia Sullins. She is with Wisconsin Women Entrepreneurs. Thanks for joining us today, Sonia. Thank you for having me. So you folks are having an event coming up, and this is raising money for uh, homeless families, girls getting introduced to the world of business, and so much more. Before we talk about the event, tell us about your organization. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, so WWE is Wisconsin Women Entrepreneurs. And we actually, next year will be our 20 year anniversary. Oh, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah, I know, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So a lot of changes have happened in 20 years. And uh, uh, right now what we're doing is raising some funds so we can really boost up the programming and the education. We have a lot of generations in our group. We have the millennials, the generation after the millennials. What's that called now? Gen X. <laughs> No, that's before the, the newer, the newer, the newest generation. one. Mm. Is it Z? I, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's yeah, Z. Yeah. Um, and all the way to the boomers. So we have people that have been with WWE since the very beginning that are still with us. And we have a lot of new people coming in too. So um, it's really exciting time for us. What a great mix of ages and people and probably yeah. skill sets as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's wonderful. Now you're having an event that. I'm not sure if this is the name, but I see it's a holiday mixer, so I'm already interested. That sounds like such a fun time. Third annual, right? Yes. It, we just started it three years ago, um, and this year we're doing something really exciting with it. Um, it's been really popular. We kind of mm -hmm. just did it um, almost on a whim the first time. We thought, oh, yeah. this will be fun. And then it really was a big deal, so um, we're having it at the Grand Ballroom at the Wyndham Hotel. Um, that's on, in Fitchburg, like on the corner of Fish Hatch and PD. That's a great space. In fact, we've had a couple of events there ourselves. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. I know, and we have so much room. So we'll have enough room to have our silent auction like usual, which is a part of our fundraiser. But we'll also have tables kind of as booths. So we're having like a little vendor fair, only not where people are selling things. Instead, what they're going to be doing is doing mini services, like, like little massage, reflexology, so Oh things, gosh. yeah. So when you attend the event, you can actually sign up and get these services done, oh, which will be a lot like of fun. fun. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And then we're also have done a lot of outreach this year, and really looking to collaborate with what we're calling community partners. And what we're really looking for uh, to have at the event are other organizations who also serve women entrepreneurs and have them there as resources. Yeah. So they'll be able to be at the booths also and chat with women and get them interested and involved in what they provide. Wow, I think that's great. That's so amazing and it's it sounds like such a cool event in so many different ways, whether you are a woman entrepreneur or you're living in the community and you want to check out some great local businesses and get some services. It, yeah, and, and everyone's invited. So oh, it's awesome. been more and more that where the spouses are coming oh, and um, that our silent auctions are not just women-owned businesses, but all businesses right. and they like to come to and check everything out. So it's really a, a nice event that um, really inclusive of everybody. When and is this so people can mark their calendars? Oh, it is November 28th. That's Perfect. a Tuesday. It's the fifth Tuesday of November, the one right after Thanksgiving. Sounds like a fun Tuesday. And there's <laughs> going to be food and, of course, there's a cash bar mm -hmm. and all these great little services for people. So let's talk a little bit about tickets because with everything going on, you would assume this is ex an expensive event, right, in a great location, but it's really not expensive. No, that's one of our goals is to keep it as affordable as possible. So it's just fifteen dollars wow. if you register ahead of time. Eighteen at the door, but that's just because I have to plan the food, so I put a little extra on there to get people there you to go. register yeah. ahead of time. <laughs> but we do take people at the door also, and um, it's real easy to to register. It's on our website. It's also on Eventbrite. You can search it there. So it's the third annual holiday mixer and silent auction. Um, and our website, should I give you the website? Absolutely. It's, yeah, it should be on screen too, okay. but go ahead and list it. Yeah, I think so it's nice. www dot wwe south central dot org don't forget the org it's not a comma it's an org yes and then right on the home page is a cool little graphic and if you click on that it takes you right to registration but below it are links for the silent auction so we're still taking donations oh, awesome. so if anybody wants to get in on it you can just click that link and sign right up well, and then there's a link for community partners and there's a link for the vendors and I want to mention too before we go last year you raised over five thousand dollars from the auction so wow. obviously that's the point of this event it's all for this great organization and you're very successful in raising money to help out 
It's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to go three places. So we're a nonprofit, and then we also support something called Girls Biz, which helps middle school age girls learn how to be entrepreneurs. And it's also for the local charity, The Road Home for Homeless Families. That sounds great, Sonia. Good luck with your event. Thank you so much for coming in today. So again, November 28th, mark your calendars. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to Girl Talk. We are at William Thomas Jewelers today, right on the corner of University and Farley, if you've never stopped in before. And I'm really excited to introduce you to our next guest today. But first, I need everybody to do their best photo booth pose. I love it. It's like we've done this before. <laughs> today with us, we have Aub Aubrey Javaharian. She's the owner of Frills and Finery Photo Booth. You must just have the most fun job. I mean, photo booths are such an awesome addition really to any event, and that's what we're going to be chatting about today. So thanks for being with yeah, us. Thanks for having me. So I guess right off the bat, um, I think photo booths in general are trending, especially for weddings, that that's a staple that people want to have. Yeah. How is your business different than maybe some other photo booth companies? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the booth that we have is more modern. It's open style or open air. Oh, nice. um, so what that means is that they don't have walls enclosing it. It's not like a traditional booth where you'd go in and it has, you know, the walls and you can fit a couple people in there. It's open. Um, we can get about 10 people comfortably in the frame. Wow. Um, more if you really squish everyone, <laughs> <laughs> but up to 10 people. Um, and, you know, it's kind of like it draws people in. They see yeah. a sparkly backdrop and they're like, that and oh these people are having fun I want to have fun too so <laughs> that's kind of how it's a, how it's different and then we're also modern as well so we have a um, texting option which always goes on so uh, oh. the guests can just go and enter their phone number and then it gets texted to them typically in the next minute so then they also have a digital copy that's so that's, perfect because yeah. in today's world you know most of the time people want to post those to Facebook or social media exactly. instant gratification exactly. there, you go. <laughs> there you go yep mm -hmm. this sounds like so much fun my family and I always hits a photo booth whenever we travel <laughs> just to like have that souvenir so they're everywhere but this is something special I've never heard of this style before so what kind of events do you typically do with your photo booth well we do a lot of weddings mm -hmm. um, probably about half weddings have business events and and for the business events there's a lot of um, holiday parties are huge um, grand open Openings, things like that. So, uh, yeah, we do probably about half weddings, half business events. I think we need to hire her for one of our Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can see how that would be perfect, too, for a wedding where maybe the whole party, the wedding party and the bridal party, you want to get in one picture together mm -hmm. to goof around. Mm -hmm. yeah. You couldn't do that with a traditional photo booth. Yeah, it would be hard. You yeah. You really have to squish four or five with people all those in there. Might <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Especially with, right. The, with the bride's yeah. gown. Right. Exactly. So, we've been talking about our favorite parts of it and how we enjoy it. How about you when you're working these events what do you enjoy about it yeah so uh, probably the the best thing about it is the fact that everyone's having so much fun and yeah. you know these are a group of strangers but when you see them interacting and having fun and laughing it's almost like you you know them like almost like you're part of the family yeah. and it's really cool um, to see people just having such a great time and I think that's my my absolute favorite I part. love that does it take yeah. a lot of time to set up since it's a little bit different than a traditional photo booth? Um, actually, it takes up not much time at all. Yeah. Um, we can set up in about 15 minutes, oh, nice. which is Whoa. really nice. It's really speedy and fast. So we can just wheel it in, set it up 15 minutes. Um, and because it's open style, it can fit pretty much anywhere. We don't mm -hmm. need much space. Um, and then t uh, teardown is the same too, just 10, 15 minutes and boop, we're gone. <laughs> so if someone was interested, yeah, that sounds so easy, convenient and fun, like you said. Yeah. If someone was interested in hiring you for this, how long is the, I guess, rental or whatever, however you call it? Mm. What is the length of time you come for the event? Yeah, um, the most typical uh, rental period is three hours, okay. um, but we have we start at two hours is what the package starts at, and then we have um, three hours is most common, and then we've done four hours for some weddings and business events, but typically if you have guest size of about 150 to 200 people, um, three hours is great because it's enough time for everyone to get in at least one time at the booth um, and have enough time for it probably stays pretty busy like people yeah. coming coming because they are attracted <laughs> to the fun yeah. and the glitter and yeah, the, yeah right and, and it depends too like some weddings are 
in, in events in general, you know, some are different. Um, you can kind of see the vibe of the people, yeah. but if you have a really lively bunch, there's always <laughs> there's always a really long line. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. I was just going to say that the ones I've been to weddings usually that have the photo booth, there's always a line. Yeah. So you're kind of watching to see when it goes down a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Do you feel like this is a trend that's um, growing? Or yeah, yeah, it is growing. You know, and photos have been around for a while now, um, but they're not going anywhere. I don't mm -hmm. think um, we yeah. always get inquiries, and it's one of those things that sometimes you hear, oh, it's just one of those trends. But I think it's it's not going anywhere. And and again, it's I think it's only growing in popularity. So it's great. I've <laughs> noticed some of the the cute props that you have to offer. Oh. Go ahead and tell us about a few of those. Oh sure. So the props that we have are um, most of them are, are wooden. Uh, props like stick props and those are fun, you know glasses and mustaches things like that we always uh, bring a tiny hat oh, we have tiny hats <laughs> yes we have some emoji faces which actually those might be kind of the most popular those are the hard eyes one oh, you know, so, like, <laughs> so yeah people have, have fun so with next props. time you've got to bring props with you so we can pose again and okay. I, I know <laughs> You're right. just put up it in front of my face exactly. and we're good to go again Aubrey with Frills and Finery Photo Booth thank you so much for being with yeah, us yeah thanks for having me and we'll be back with more Girl Talk right after this. Hi, welcome back to Girl Talk. If you're just tuning in, we are here at William Thomas Jewelers and it is so beautiful in this space. We've mm -hmm. been having a great time. You may have heard in the open that I shared my favorite diamond is a yellow diamond. And I'm excited now because we get to chat with the expert. This is Bill Furman, the owner, and thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here with you guys. And I happen to also have heard something about that. <laughs> this is... On cue! Uh, this is a four carat oval yellow diamond. Gorgeous. That is so great. I, do, can you see why I love that? Oh, it's so beautiful. And I think it is such a unique color. Yes, That it it's is. just really eye-catching. So, Jess's husband. Hopefully if you're, if you're yeah. watching. Yeah. It's available. Hint, hint. It's okay. <laughs> right. It we know what can be done. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that um, really makes you special, though. These guys do so much great custom work. Mm -hmm. But we're going to touch on a few different things to kind of give an overview of what it's all about here at William Thomas. Let's first talk about purchasing diamonds. Sure. There's so much to go into purchasing. It's overwhelming yeah. for the layperson mm -hmm. that's not educated and doesn't want to spend hours and hours um, informing themselves. There's the information on the web, there's information at different jewelry stores. Uh, it's really helpful to understand who you're dealing with in that purchase yeah. and just getting fair, open, honest information. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You have to be able to look in their eye and feel like they're being honest with you and trust them. Yeah, right. absolutely. So trust is huge. Well, that's one of the things that I think your, your customers appreciate in you is just your your trustworthiness, your genuine ability to help somebody, and your caring for that. And the reason I bring that up, and you, Bill didn't know I was going to say this on TV, but I saw a couple of recent Facebook posts that were incredibly complimentary to you and your character and mm -hmm. the way that you treat people and, and, and your customers, clients as well. So Thank you. This guy's the real deal. Well, and I always think it's pretty cool when you can walk into a local business and this is actually William Thomas. Like, mm -hmm. you're actually the owner, and you're here every single day working with people, helping them create custom jewelry. And you don't yeah. always find that. It, it's, it's great. It's what I love to do. Oh, that's awesome. Um, how about as far as certification of diamonds go? Because I'm assuming that's, I don't know a ton about it, but that's a big role. That's true. I did see once a sheet that had a list of at least 40 different acronyms describing different gem labs. Oh my uh, gosh. I won't name them all, but the one gem certification lab you want to focus on is GIA. GIA. It's the Gemological Institute of America. Okay. They are really the most reputable, fair, honest company. They treat you right. or me or the diamond industry the same. They don't have preferential treatment. They, they just are straight shooters. There's no funny business. Yeah. If, <laughs> if you look at any reputable site online, mm -hmm. it, it's gonna, they're going to sell GIA stones. Okay. Got it. Um, I think so. I've heard that term. Yeah. yeah That's the one, one certification company. If it's not GIA, in my opinion, it may as well you know, just go back to the jewelry you're dealing with and then trust him. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of sounding familiar, I think a lot of people have heard of, is it the four C's? Yes. In terms of quality of diamonds. So go ahead and educate us on that right. and what you advise when people come in. Yeah, people come in and all, always wondering where should they be in the quality mix. You know, it's, it's a price, um, color, which how white or how yellow, clarity, the imperfections, the lack of imperfections, and carat weight is simply the weight of the stone, how big it is. Mm -hmm. 
I have sort of what I say to people on a regular basis. If you're my brother sitting across from me, I'm going to tell you, you want to get a G color and an SI1 clarity, and that is going to be the most value you can get for your money. Uh, the best combination of yep. all these factors. All together in one, that would be, it looks perfect to the naked eye. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, it's not yellow, and it's not perfect white. Uh, the clarity is at a place you can't see with your eye. Um, it's the best value. Wow, that's good to know. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about, about trading. We were talking a little bit about a, a client that you're helping now before the show started, and what they've done is they it, were, engage, were engaged with One Ring, and now five-year anniversary are upgrading, right. and I think that's such a beautiful story and a, a great tip because a lot of folks don't have the money that to get the diamond they really yeah. want right. when they're getting engaged. So talk a little bit about right. that and the value and how that works. It's not always five year. This is a five year <laughs> anniversary in this case, but usually it's 15, 20 or a longer you know, period of time for a big upgrade. And people have that story. This is all we could afford back then. Now our kids are grown out of college. You know, We're now ready to spend money on ourselves. Um, trading diamonds in, the biggest uh, key I would say is to establish a value for what you're trading first and then look at what you're getting. It's real confusing, just like a car, buying a car, mm -hmm. is what is your trade really worth? Mm -hmm. right. You can have a high price on a car and they give you a lot for your trade. Same with a diamond. You could have, uh, uh, give you twice what you paid for your diamond, but if the new diamond is very expensive, it defeats the purpose. Right. So always keep them separate. And what is my diamond worth? And what is the new diamond cost? Yeah. So really that's my good, advice. Good tip. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and great way to do that, too, yeah. for couples out there. Or, you know, just when you're ready to... Spend some money on yourselves. I like that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Is that all yeah. true if you're just selling your diamonds as well? Yeah, same thing. And okay. selling a diamond would be different because there is just that, what you're right. going to get for it. Okay. And then, you, again, establishing what you have mm -hmm. is the key because different places that are purchasing will have different opinions. And it is gotcha. opinions. So even if you were to get that diamond certified by GIA mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. then you go to sell it, then you kind of know what you have. Oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Good tip. Yeah. Bill, we've also heard about lab-grown or synthetic diamonds, and I'm wondering what you think about them and your opinion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not an expert in that. I don't sell lab-created. Um, we don't sell that version of diamond. Um, people that are looking for a diamond, in our experience, are looking for what comes from originally 100 miles beneath the earth and looking for that natural diamond that the earth created. Mm -hmm. um, there's created gemstones. Now there's created diamonds. They've never really taken off. Um, we haven't seen it in, in our marketplace, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not an expert in that field, but I, I don't subscribe to that, and I sell only natural. Yeah, I think that there's something to, to be said for that, and, mm -hmm. and what you're giving somebody being natural from the earth is sometimes the point and what people really enjoy and believe in. So There's one more thing I'll add to that. In the yellow diamond, your favorite, there are <laughs> color-enhanced diamonds that are enhanced, they're brown and off-color diamonds that they irradiate to make pretty colors. And those oh. are not natural colors. Are those like the chocolate diamonds I've heard of? No, those are natural. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Well, it's been fun talking about diamonds. I know <laughs> we've had a great time being it here. It is fun. And uh, we really enjoy you, Bill, so thank you so yeah, much for having you. us. It's been a, it. a nice time. Great. I want to thank all of our guests for joining us today and all of you for having fun with us all this show on Girl Talk. We'll see you next time. Beauty and styling for Girl Talk provided by the Ultimate Veritas Spa and Salon.